Good afternoon. Welcome back to Passion World Talk Radio Network. PWTRN is a wholly owned subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Educate, enlighten, entertain. And today we're talking about the new tariffs that Mr. Trump has initiated and why he feels it's a good way to do business with countries outside the United States and their products. The article was written by Paul Weissman, the Associated Press on PBS News. Donald Trump has identified what he sees as an all-purpose fix for what ails us. Slap new tariffs on foreign goods entering the United States. Basically, it's an import tax, and he believes it will create more factory jobs, shrink the federal deficit, lower food prices, and allow the government to subsidize child care, first thing I've heard. He even says that terrorists can promote world peace. Really? I thought terrorists was not about real estate. Maybe I'm wrong. Trump said in Flint, Michigan, that tariffs are the greatest thing ever invented. Well, he would. He's not going to pay for it. Or Elon Musk or any of the senators, the congressmen. No, that cost comes down to us. Reagan used to call the trickle-down effect. Only I'm just going to work a lot faster under Trump than with Reagan. As president, excuse me, Trump will impose these tariffs targeting imported solar panels, steel, aluminum, and everything else from China at a whopping 60% tariff. And the rest of the tariffs from other countries will be at 20%. He calls himself the tariff man. And this week, he even raised anti higher to publish John Deere for having the goal to move part of their company down to Mexico for production. He now tax John Deere if they export anything back into the country at 200%. Okay. And he threatened to hit Mexico made goods with a 100% tariff. That risk blowing up the trade deal that his own previous administration negotiated with Canada and Mexico. How quickly they forget. Mainstream economics are generally skeptical of tariffs considering them an inefficient way for governments to raise money and promote prosperity. And they're also alarmed by Trump's latest proposed tariffs. This week, a report from the Peterson Institute for International Economics concluded that Trump's main tariff proposal, assuming that the target of countries retaliated with their own tariffs, would slash more than a percentage point off the U.S. economy by 2026 and make inflation two percentage points higher next year than it otherwise would have been. Vice President Camilla Harris has dismissed Trump's terrorist threats as serious. Her campaign had cited a report that found that Trump's 20% Universal tariff would cost a typical family nearly four thousand dollars a year. Where would we get an extra four thousand dollars a year? We can barely meet costs now. But Biden Harris administration also has a taste for tariffs. It retained the taxes Trump imposed on a three hundred and sixty dollar billion in Chinese good, and it all imposed a hundred percent tariff on Chinese electric vehicles. In fact, in recent years, the U.S. has retreated from its post-World War II role of promoting global free trade and lower tariffs. That shift was a response to the loss of U.S. manufacturing jobs widely attributed to unfettered free trade 
and an increasingly aggressive China. It's like not where we own the world, folks. They are typically charged as a percentage of the price a buyer pays a foreign seller. In the United States, tariffs are collected by Customs and Border Protection agents at 328 ports of entries across the country. The tariff ranges from passenger cars, 2.5%, to golf shoes, 6%. Tariffs can be lower for countries with which the U.S. has trade agreements. For example, most goods can move among the United States, Mexico, and Canada tariff-free because of Trump's U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. And as you probably have suspected, there's a lot of misinformation about who actually pays these tariffs. Trump insists that tariffs are paid for by foreign countries. In fact, it is importers, and we are an importer. American companies that pay tariffs, and the money goes to the U.S. Treasury. Those con companies typically pass their higher costs on to their customers, which is the citizens of the United States, in the form of higher prices. That's why economists say consumers usually end up footing the bill for tariffs. Surprise, 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 as if we didn't know that. Still, tariffs can hurt foreign countries by making their products pricier pricier and harder to sell aboard. Yang Zhu, an economist at Shanghai Student University, concluded in a study that Trump's tariffs on Chinese goods inflicted more than three times as much damage to the Chinese economy as they did to our economy. And tariffs are intended mainly to protect domestic industries by raising the price of imports. Tariffs can protect homegrown manufacturers. They also serve to punish foreign countries for committing unfair trade practices, like subsidizing their exporters or dumping products at unfairly low prices. Before the federal income tax was established in 1913, tariffs were a major revenue driver for the government. From 1790 to 1860, tariffs accounted for 90% of federal revenue, according to Douglas Irwin, a Dartmouth College economist who has studied the history of trade policy. However, tariffs fell out of favor as global trade grew after World War II. Government needed vastly bigger revenue streams to finance its operations. In the physical year, then September 30th, the government is expected to collect $814 billion in tariffs and fees. That's a trial next to the $2.5 trillion that's expected to come from individual income taxes and the $1.7 trillion from Social Security and Medicare taxes. Still, Trump wants to enact a budget policy that resembles what was in place in the 19th century. He argued that tariffs on farm imports could lower food prices by aiding American farmers. In fact, tariffs on imported food products would almost certainly send grocery prices up by reducing choices for consumers and competition for American producers. Tariffs can also be used to pressure other countries on issues that may or may not be related to trade. In 2019, for example, Trump used the threat of tariffs as leverage to persuade Mexico to crack down on waves of Central American migrants crossing Mexican territory on their way to the United States. It's too bad he's not using it for all the gangs that are coming up from Mexico and infiltrating all the United States. Trump even sees tariffs as a way to prevent wars. Quote, I can do it with a phone call, he said at an August rally in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Hi, Putin. I decided to lower the tariffs of importing goods from Russia. What do you think? 
You're going to call off the nuclear thermonuclear war? Economics generally consider tariffs self-defeating. Tariffs raise costs for companies and consumers that rely on imports. They also likely to provoke retaliation. The European Union, for example, punched back against Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum by taxing U.S. products from bourbon to Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Chinese responded to Trump's trade war by slapping tariffs on American goods, including soybeans and pork, in a calculated drive to hurt his supporters and foreign country. Didn't work. A study by economists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the University of Zurich, Harvard, and the World Bank conclude that Trump's tariffs failed to restore jobs to the American heartland. The tariffs, quote, neither raise nor lower U.S. employment, unquote, where they were supposed to protect jobs. So much for that campaign promise. <clears throat> Despite Trump's 2018 taxes on imported steel, for example, the number of jobs at U.S. steel plants barely budge. They remain right around 140,000. By comparison, Walmart alone employs 1.6 million people in the United States. Worse, the retaliatory tax taxes imposed by China and other nations on U.S. goods had a negative employment impact, especially for folks the study found. These retaliatory tariffs were only partly offset by billions of government aid that Trump doled out to farmers. The Trump tariffs also damaged companies that relied on targeted imports. If Trump's trade war fizzled as policy, though, it succeeded as politics, the study found that support for Trump and Republican congressional candidates rose in areas most exposed to the import tariffs. The industrial Midwest and manufacturing heavy southern states like North Carolina and Tennessee. Yeah, well, that's nice, but it's not going to work. I'm curious to see what happens in the first 100 days, aren't you? I guess becoming a totalitarian government and an autocrat, it expects a lot of sacrifices. Thank you very much for listening. You can go over to passionateworldtalkradio.com, scroll down until you come to State of Current Affairs, click on it, it'll take you to a web page. You can leave a comment or make some suggestions. Scroll down until you come to a Google link. Click on that, and that take you inside the belly of PWTRN's YouTube beast. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great weekend.